Hi everyone, welcome to SSW TV. I'm Damien Brady and I'm joined today by John Papa and Ward Bell. Thanks for making the journey, guys. Yeah, thanks for having us. Thanks for having us. Okay, so we're here at um, the MVP Summit. It's been a long week. MVP Summit, there's been a lot of stuff that we've seen, a lot of changes, especially in the web stack. As a developer, how do we keep up with these changes? That's a good question. How do we do that? So, so there's a lot of ways you can do it. I know what I do is I try to just not look at everything. Meaning I try to at least get awareness of what is out there when I hear a lot of the terms of things, but I don't necessarily dive deep in everything. So the key there is to figure out what are the two or three new things you need to look at. But then the rest of them, just put them on a shelf, make yourself a list, and get to them as you need to. I listen to John. He tells me what I should look at. <laughs> I just tell him how to dress. That's it. He, he teaches me how to dress. <laughs> uh, but actually, the, we do look to curators to sell, help guide us into the things that we should think about. And that's part of the MVP role is to try and distill some of that down and help people understand what some of the, the, the things that we think are going to impact the most. So shallow until you need it, do you think? I think so. But I think you have to stay. It's How shallow do you go? You know, that's the... You have to go deep enough to know if you need to look at it deeper. So for example, you know, exploring Grunt and Gulp, for example. Figure out what they are, or what do these things mean to you? Do they solve a problem you have today? If the answer to that is no, put them on a shelf, put them on a list, get to them later when they do. Um, but you at least need to know what those things do. Yeah. I completely agree that it's problem driven. If you have a problem and it looks like one of these technologies is attacking that problem in a way that might be interesting or new, then it's worth looking at. If it's just some acorn rolling under the tree, maybe you let it go. I think the common thing we look at too is people always say, there's a new shiny object, look what it can do. But then my first reaction is always, because of time, I say, well, how does this help me now? And if I can't answer that, I put it on a shelf. Yeah, I guess I, I always get worried when people say, oh, we should be using this technology for everything. And in particular, you know, Angular has been the one lately that we use for everything. So you guys are, you guys are heavily involved in that community as well. Yep. Um, you guys both use Angular pretty much day to day. Is that, is that fair? I do. Do you still? I do. I do, but not, but not exclusively because I'm interested in knowing the range of frameworks that people use. But Angular is the clear um, leader at the moment in, in the, the frameworks that people are using. And in this case, I don't think it's a popularity contest. I think there's a, a there there. Yeah, they are the new jQuery in a lot of ways to, to what they're going. But I also think it's more, I agree, it's not just Angular, it's the JavaScript world that we're in. Right. So, very recently, there was a bit of a you know presentation on what is coming in Angular 2, um, and it met with let's say mixed responses in the community. Can I ask you um, what do you think of the changes and what do you think of the direction they're heading? I think they're heading in a direction that they had to go. I don't think that they're doing something that they simply because they wanted to. Uh, the web is changing. They uh, had designed for years ago. They made some mistakes. They like to clean up those mistakes. They like to get on board with where the new browsers are going. They want to get on board with things like web components. And um, these are fundamental enough that they must, uh, they must change the framework. The question on everybody's mind is, how do I get from where I am today to where they will be there? And I, there's some confusion about this, and John and I have talked about this a lot, which is uh, everybody wants to know how to get there now, and they're saying, but we don't have a there now, so how can we tell you how to get to some place we don't exactly know? It's 22, isn't it? It, it really is. And so, yeah, I think with, with Angular 2, they've kind of laid out their vision for what they're looking at. Now, some of the things they shared were really early, so they're being very transparent in that. Of, this is what we're thinking of doing to get to that point, but I think some of them are more solid and others are a little more, this is what we'd like, maybe it'll evolve. Uh, this is an opportunity for the community to provide feedback into what they want to do, but more importantly, as Ward said, just because Angular 2 has been talked about doesn't mean you should stop everything else now and start looking at it. We don't constantly look for, well, geez, .NET 8 is going to be out someday. Should I stop now and wait for that? Uh, and there will be a migration path. There's going to have to be a story to say, how do I go from here to there? But the bottom line is, you shouldn't be looking, just because it's a new shiny object of anything, to migrate today. And if code works, don't change it, right? 
Exactly. And we shouldn't leap to conclusions because a lot of people have made judgments based on PowerPoints that they saw that weren't even backed up by yes. anybody speaking. And now the story is beginning to come about, uh, about what was behind those PowerPoints and things that were jokes that would be funny to an audience come f fall flat when just looked at in print. And we all know this. So uh, I think the big message is, hey, everybody chill out for a little bit, learn and relax. Uh, and and then, then you can get involved to the degree you want to and contribute. They want to hear. I'll give you an example. Something that's pervasive in Angular is this concept of an Angular module, which is kind of like a namespace in .NET. And they came out to site five years ago. And things have changed, right? So now ES6 is going to have a thing called modules in it that's going to be baked in. And you can already do today in Node uh, on the server with JavaScript. Well, what they put up on a slide about it without words, um, well, I say without words, the video wasn't ready, but the slides were out and available a week ahead of time, was basically that, hey, modules are going away in Angular. Well, that's not really what's happening. What's happening is they don't need that anymore because now you've got ES6 modules. So they're just changing from one thing to the other. Do, do you think it's going to wait until ES6 is in all of these browsers, or is it likely to jump that gun and try and... No, I don't think it will, and, and I think a lot of people who are doing ES6 stuff now, they can use Tracer to actually run, compile on the server, and a little bit of shim on the client to convert it to ES5, but you can also use ES5 to do these things. Right. It's very important that there are polyfills for the feature set, and so um, you'll be able to run, and they'll be able to detect that you're running in an ES5 browser and say, okay, you boom, boom, boom. So it, it's, it's not locked into that. Um, it's, it's really how do I design and write uh, in a style that is where JavaScript is going to be and then be able to run it in today's browsers. Because I remember you mentioned um, it's kind of the new jQuery thing. So when jQuery did their reset, they said, well, from this point on, we're not going to support i8 and down. Similar kind of thing, I suppose? Yeah, it is. What, what they've said concretely so far is with, I, uh, with IE. <laughs> That's on my head. So with uh, Angular 1.2, that'll support IE 8. That's what they're supporting with. But the 1.3, is going to be IE 9 and up now. They've no longer, they're not actively taking things out, but they're like, we're no longer going to try to support IE 8 and below. Yeah. With 2.0, they're doing the same thing, obviously, with that kind of a concept. But they are saying it's ES6, but they're writing it now today with Tracer to get you back down. To ES5, um, to ES5. Which, is, which is all the mobile browsers and uh, most of the modern desktop browsers. Yeah, even, yeah, even IE. <laughs> Even I, yes. The other thing that I think we need to call attention to, because some people say, oh, you know, I, should I use 1.3 while I'm waiting? And, and my instinct is absolutely. They put a lot of effort into that. That's not a dead product at all. They will continue to evolve it. It's it just the, came out. Yeah. And it's the, like it's, it's the right product to use now. And the other thing is that although 2.0 is changing a lot, of, a lot of syntax and some of the concepts, the mindset, I think the paradigm that Angular has today is the, sim is, is the same paradigm they're going to have in 2.0. So it doesn't need to be named a different product. It's Angular. It's recognizably Angular. As you code in 1.3 today, you'll be developing the concepts and mechanic, most of the mechanics you need to get there, I'm convinced. And some things we've seen are already simpler. So I think the theme, one of the themes is simplification. Yeah. Uh, so like in Angular today, you have services, factories, providers, constants, and values. Five ways to basically create something that gives you data. And in Angular 2, they're like, we don't need that. We've got components. We're just going to use components to do these things. And we'll use classes in ES6. So you don't need to have many flavors of the same thing. You can just say, you know, just, it's following more of the guidelines of what's in, in the new flavor of JavaScript. Okay. So one of the changes as well, I believe, was um, forcing, or the suggestion that they were going to force you to use at script. Not true. Glad you brought that up. Glad yep. you brought it up. Excellent. So, yeah. so I'm wrong. Yeah. <laughs> well, from what they've said, uh, at script is basically um, a super set of TypeScript is what they're telling us. So it gives us runtime checking, for example, and annotations as mm -hmm. well. Um, there's a couple other things. But those things are things that they feel, just like TypeScript feels, are good and needed on top of ES6. So they want to introduce those and try to get other browsers to use them. However, as much as they talked about that, you don't need to use that to write Angular 2. You can absolutely write um, uh, Angular 2 code in straight JavaScript, the, ones we, the JavaScript we know and love. Okay. So this was almost like a parallel announcement? It's not, not part of Angular, it's just another thing they're doing? Is that the at fair? Thing? At script, yeah. Yeah, it's just yet another thing that they're building on with, you know, and, and uh, it's, it's not, it doesn't exist yet, obviously, at least in its final form. Um, but they're actually, they say they're talking with the TypeScript team, too. So I personally have hopes, and I have no knowledge in this, that at some point maybe these things can kind of 
merge together. Well, everybody does. The impetus for it is clearly driven out of things that the Angular team needs. And so uh, it makes sense that they are taking the lead on the uh, development of AdScript, but it is not pinned to Angular. Yeah, and these are things that are, it's not enhancing Angular, to be very clear. These are enhancements to JavaScript. So theoretically, the way they're putting about this, you could use that script to develop in Backbone or jQuery or I mean, whatever you want to do with JavaScript. OK, fantastic. Um, so you mentioned before that it's good to be across a whole lot of different technologies. What are some things we need to know about now? What, what have you guys been working with and working on lately? Um, Ward? Uh, what have I been working on? I've been working on our product, the Breeze, the Breeze product, which tell is us more. tell us more, <laughs> shall we? Which is open source. So, uh, and it, it's a, a layer for because so many people are building single page applications, which is also that's a revolution that's going on. We're right in the middle of it. The idea that you will execute on the client instead of going back to the server all the time. And so as you begin to do that, a lot of you are thinking about what you need in a client application. You start to have layering and architecture on the client. And one of those layers is how do I manage my data? How do I cache it, validate a query, and uh, save it, and go offline, and things like that. So Breeze.js is a client-side library, open source, designed to handle that set of problems. Uh, at the same time, we've got our eyes very, you know, we're here at uh, MVP Summit, and we've got our eyes on what's happening on the .NET side of the house, and in particular mobile with Xamarin and so forth. So we have a parallel product called, open source also, called Breeze Sharp, which is tuned for people who want to have that same kind of architectural layer, but they want to code in C Sharp I or F Sharp. There. Breeze Sharp, C Sharp. Did, did you see that? Very clever. Breeze Sharp. <laughs> So and yeah, what have you, what have you been working on? Yeah, I just follow him around, but yep. he's just so good looking with his jacket. And well, <laughs> so I do a lot with JavaScript, and you know I do a lot of Gulp and Grunts and mm -hmm. DevOps. Uh, but one of the things I've been doing is on the Angular side is to help people get consistent in their code. There are it's great. There's 20 ways to do everything in Angular, but there's 20 ways of doing things in Angular. So if you're on a team or a large project, it's hard if you don't have some kind of consistency. So I, I've developed uh, an Angular style guide and, and following pattern called clean code, mm -hmm. like the clean code patterns, to basically just make a consistent style for using Angular. And it does two things. It helps your team understand each other and jump in and out of things. But it also, uh, I'm trying to make it be such that it's forward thinking, meaning that as Angular 2 starts evolving, the style guide will help you prepare for getting there. Because let's face it, if the Angular 2 team is going to try to create a migration story, if we're doing it 20 different ways today, that's 20 different stories and how to get there. Yeah. If they can write one or two, it's a lot easier. Mm -hmm. So for this, I've got a GitHub project up um, on GitHub, that's, uh, and I can provide you guys a link it's called a Style Guide. And then I've also got an accompanying Pluralsight course, which uh, does that called uh, Angular Patterns Clean Code. Okay. I'd like to add two things about what he's doing there. One of them that is that, that that is a very active GitHub project. So there's a, a constant a feedback loop, and there are pull, you've been taking pull requests, requests on the style guide. So yeah, that's interesting. About 20 different contributors now. Exactly. And the second thing is that the Angular team likes it. Uh, and have been talking about it actively everywhere, saying, you know, you want to go take a look at this one. So there may be a million style guides out there, but this one is uh, first among equals. And it's free, and which it's is good. So you just use it. Oh, excellent. Well, I, I, I've got a million more questions, but we're, we're running out of time and people stop watching, so... Oh, come on, we know you want to before he gets his clothes. <laughs> okay, so where, where, where do the clothes come from? Well, I do live in San Francisco, and we have an endless supply of, of period clothing <laughs> providers in the hate, which if any of you remember in 1968, that was the place to be. So. Thank you, John Papa, Ward Bell, for uh, joining me. Um, thanks for the, spending the time. It's been great to be here. It's great, man. Thanks. Cheers, this is Damien for SSW TV. We'll see you next time. Did you get all that? We'll take the SSW TV quiz and test your knowledge now.